are standing in support uh, of a, a number of workers from here on Long Island who uh, have filed uh, uh, a case uh, uh, with NLRB uh, against an employer who fired them for participating uh, in the Day Without Immigrants back in February, uh, which they decided to uh, take action uh, to protest some of the conditions that they were uh, working under at this place. Um, so we'll be hearing from the, uh, a number, a couple of the workers themselves, uh, members of the legal team that are representing them, uh, some of uh, in our, a couple of our leaders who are also standing in solidarity with these workers, uh, and uh, members of other organizations, including SEPA Mujer, um, and then we'll be opening it up for questions. Uh, but to begin, I wanted to mention that we are uh, standing with these workers here in solidarity because we know that uh, despite what uh, the president might be uh, saying around the country and what we're seeing from a number of agencies, particularly law enforcement agencies around the country, uh, scapegoating immigrants and separating immigrant families, uh, we are doing this to remind uh, immigrants and encourage immigrants to stand up for their rights, uh, whether it's in the workplace or in, the, in our communities, uh, and to say that we are going to be standing with them in organizations like Make the Road, SEPA Mujer, and a number of other organizations, not only here on Long Island, but across the country, are uh, standing by them and will do everything in our power to defend their rights and their rights of their families to remain together and work in dignity. Uh, we are also here to send a strong message to employers here on Long Island and across the country uh, that immigrants are not going to be standing silent, uh, that they will be standing up for their rights, and that we're going to be launching a campaign to continue to empower and educate immigrants about their rights and ways in which they can take action, uh, and that any employer who violates uh, the labor or anti-discrimination -discrim laws against immigrants or, or workers in general uh, will face uh, legal action and public humiliation, as in the case of the employer that we'll be talking about today. Uh, we will be doing most of it in English, but uh, a number of the workers only speak Spanish, so a couple of us will be interpreting, or I might be interpreting uh, for different parts of it. Thank you. So we're going to start with Eric and Juan, who are two of the workers. Eric, Juan. Maybe one at a time. One at a time. Ah, mi nombre es Eric. Estoy aquí por apoyar al grupo de Made the Road, porque fui despedido por en mi trabajo por participar en la protesta del Día Sin Inmigrantes. Y por la situación de maltrato en mi trabajo sobre los trabajadores hispanos. My name is Eric, and I'm here uh, with Make the Road today because uh, I was fired for participating on a day without immigrants uh, and for the conditions that I was facing in the workplace. Sí. Uh, también uh, quiero comentar sobre lo que pasó en donde yo trabajaba, en la warehouse donde yo trabajaba. I also want to share some details about what happened to us at the warehouse where I was working. A un día anterior de la día sin mirante de la protesta que hubo, el manager del de mi trabajo, mi jefe, nos nos amenazó, nos dijo que el que no fuera a trabajar el día de la protesta iba a ser despedido. Uh, the day before uh, the day with our immigrants, our manager, our boss. Uh, threatened us and said that those of us who uh, were planning to take part in the protest uh, would be fired if if we if we participated. Uh, bueno, so yo participé el día sin inmigrante por uh, para que este país supiera lo lo que nosotros valemos los hispanos aquí en, en este país. Y bueno, me presenté el siguiente día que era un un viernes y Eh, mi jefe nos dejó trabajar tres horas por la mañana. Fuimos al lunch, al regreso él hizo dos grupos. Decidió, dijo el que, que levante la mano el que el que vino ayer. So, levantaron la mano y 
y los apartó y los demás están despedidos. Uh, so I participated in the, in the protest in the day without immigrants and the next day when I showed up to work uh, our boss let us work for uh, the first three hours uh, they let us go to lunch and when we came back from lunch uh, they brought us all together in the warehouse and they asked us to raise our hands for those those of us who had participated in the day without immigrants and those who had not and they separated the group See? Uh, también eh, donde yo trabajaba eh, qué pasó con los que se habían con los que habían ido a la protesta a uh, todos los que habíamos ido a la protesta fuimos despedidos and all of us who were among the ones who raised our hands who had participated in the protest uh, were fired uh, unos dijeron que por qué ellos uh, habíamos sido despedidos y simplemente él dijo no los quiero más acá we asked for the reasoning for why they were firing us and they simply said that they didn't want us there anymore. Y también el, el trato en el trabajo que el trato contra los hispanos que uh, había mucha presión so, el jefe contra los trabajadores uh, les estaban chequeando el tiempo que iban al baño uh, que no se podían durar a más de, de tres minutos y el tiempo cuando íbamos a lunch, que si veníamos un minuto tarde, él estaba presionando, estaba también apurando a los empleados. Eh, es, había mucha presión en el trabajo. So, por eso decidí yo venir aquí, por, uh, por mejorar la situación que, que tenemos. Y no solo donde yo trabajaba, sino en muchos lugares donde trabajan, trabajamos. So some of the conditions that we were facing in the workplace was that they uh, were keeping a very uh, a tight schedule with us. They were counting the minutes that we would spend in the bathroom, and they would punish us if we spent more than three minutes during our bathroom breaks. Also, if we came back from lunch a minute late, uh, we would face a lot of uh, pressure, uh, and just throughout the day, keeping us uh, working um, and, and a lot of a lot of the, that intimidation towards the majority of Latino workers that were in the warehouse. Algo más que quieres compartir? Ah, también en ese trabajo donde yo estaba habíamos muchos empleados y habían de toda clase de edad y y bueno los dueños de ahí estaban despidiendo a cada rato a la persona por habían personas que no tenían la capacidad de aguantar el trabajo. Simplemente porque lo miraban parado un ratito, le decían, tú ya no trabajas aquí, estás despedido. So, eh, pienso que eso no, no es justo porque uno está trabajando fuerte en este país. Y que... mm -hmm. I also decided to take part in the protest because uh, there, we were a very uh, uh, mixed group. There were people of many different ages working in the warehouse. And uh, they would fire people, for example, if they took a little break to catch their breath. Uh, and I, I, that's why I decided to take part in the protest because I thought that was unjust, the level of harassment that many of us were facing in the workplace. Uh, and I, I, I thought that our work needed to be um, more appreciated and we needed to be treated better as workers. Gracias. Algo más? Bueno, vamos a seguir. Buenas. Mi nombre es Juan Barahona. Tanto así como mi compañero Eric, fuimos despedidos por la razón de no ir a trabajar el día, un día sin inmigrantes. Good morning, my name is Juan Barahona, uh, B-A-R-A-O-N-A. -A -A. Um, and like my, uh, my uh, partner here, my colleague here, I was also fired for not going to work on the day without immigrants. Okay. Eh, estoy aquí porque Fuimos despedidos varios del trabajo, tantos compañeros, y pienso que no es justo los que los hicieron porque nosotros trabajamos muy fuerte y, y tantos hay muchos otros que trabajan en otros lados y fueron despedidos injustamente. Uh, and I'm here today because uh, I was fired with a number of other workers from this particular uh, warehouse. And I don't think that's fair because we are uh, we're working very hard. We were good workers there, 
Uh, and I also know that there were many other workers um, in the area and, and around the country that were also fired that day, uh, and I don't think that's fair. Mi jefe los andaba un día antes, anterior, los andaba amenazando que el que no iba, lo iba a despedir. Tanto en la hora de comer y a todo el mundo, todos los andaba diciendo. Our boss uh, was threatening us the day before the protest. Uh, as a group, he was telling us that they would fire us if we uh, <coughs> protested. But he also came uh, to us individually throughout the day. And they came to us during our lunch break to tell us again that if we participated, we would be fired. Yo no decidí ir a la protesta por apoyar siempre a nosotros los latinos para que hagan valer nuestra causa porque trabajamos muy duro y por nuestras familias también. I decided to take part in this protest so that our uh, our labor as immigrant workers and as Latino workers would be valued. Uh, for our families uh, and, and for the hard work that we do. Uh, bueno, este, los maltrataban en el trabajo, los daban poco tiempo de break, y cuando íbamos al baño, los decían que porque los tardábamos mucho, que si veníamos de break, los decían que porque los habíamos pasado un minuto, y Los explotaban, sentíamos mucha presión ahí. And we felt very exploited in this place. Uh, they would harass us if we went to the bathroom. Uh, they would also uh, complain to us if we returned one minute late from the break or during our lunch breaks. Um, Los hacían trabajar muchas horas. A veces salíamos muy demasiado cansados. Also, they would make us work very long hours and we would leave that place exhausted. Y los obligaban a trabajar más de 12 horas. Sometimes they would make us work more than 12 hour shifts. Aunque no quisiéramos y nos decían que si los íbamos, los iban a despedir. And they would tell us that if we if we walked out, they would fire us. Yeah? Okay. Well, before they go, can you just ask, was there the possibility of a lawsuit before the day without immigrants based on the I conditions? think the lawyers will, yeah, okay. that's the lawyers will next. Gracias. So now we're going to uh, bring up uh, lawyers. Uh, Liz from our team at Make the Road New York, and uh, I think from our partners as well, who can talk a little bit more about the details of the lawsuit. Hi. Your yes, my name is Elizabeth Sprotzer, S-P-R-O-T-Z-E-R, -E and I am an attorney at Make the Road New York. Um, and I'm here with my colleagues from Shulman Kessler, the law firm that we are partner partnering with in this case. Um, our clients, low-wage immigrant workers who worked at International Warehouse Group, a distribution warehouse in Long Island, as they spoke about, worked long hours, they faced low pay and often mistreatment at work. They joined together with immigrant workers around the country on the Day Without Immigrants to protest their working conditions and to demonstrate the role of immigrant workers in the workforce in the face of the Trump administration's continued attack on immigrant workers and their communities. We, they were fired for exercising these rights. We believe that these terminations violated their right under the labor law, under the National Labor Relations Act, to engage in protected concerted activity. And we, we are here because we want to ensure that immigrant workers continue organizing to defend their rights and are not retaliated against when they do. Can you talk about what the action actually is? Sure. We filed a charge with the National Labor Relations Board that the termination of our clients violated um, Section 8A1 of the National Labor Relations Act and that they were engaging in protected concerted activity and were fired for doing so. When, when did you file the charge? We filed the charge today. Uh, what kind of uh, compensation are you looking from the company? Did, did they are given back their jobs, any kind of economic compensation? We are seeking all legal remedies available under the law to make our clients whole. How many clients do you represent, and can you discuss their immigration status? We represent um, the two gentlemen who spoke today, as well as one other um, worker. The charge was filed on their behalf. Um, so we represent those three. Um, and as they spoke about, they are 
um, Latino immigrants, and we are here to defend their rights. How many how many employees got fired that day, though, that you're aware of? Our three clients and several others, we believe around 10 in total workers were fired. And where was the company the located? International Warehouse Group is located in Melville, New York. And what do, did um, Juan and Eric actually do there? Worked in the warehouse, what were their responsibilities? They may be able to speak better to that, but they worked um, in the, di it's a distribution warehouse that, dis that um, packages and distributes goods for companies such as TJ Maxx and Marshalls and provides those and other specialty services. So, um, so packing up boxes, can you ask? Yeah, packing yeah, up boxes, yeah, loading trucks. Yeah. Si quieren caminar un poquito adelante, eh, ¿cuál era el trabajo que ustedes hacían ahí adentro? ¿De qué? ¿Cuál era su el responsabilidad? El trabajo era distribuir um, mercadería para la TV Max y Marcha, y creo que habían otras tiendas ahí. Eran, eh, ¿Pero el trabajo en sí? ¿Cómo que hacían? ¿Habían cajas? Empacar, ¿Cargaban uh, camiones? Empacar las cajas, descargar camiones, uh, parquear uh, los pallets. Okay. Había okay. muchas uh, rags de pallets. Uh, yeah, so m most of their, uh, this is a warehouse where they redistribute uh, shipments for many of the box retail stores like TJ Maxx and Marshalls. Uh, so a lot of it was unloading, unloading trucks, uh, sort of wrapping the pallets and redistributing for the, sto the local stores. Thank you. Question for the attorneys. Are you essentially saying that they have the right to take time off to protest? And, you know, can you explain how that's balanced with the employers claims that they want, you know, their employees to be there when needed. Sure, under the labor law, workers are um, able and protected when they uh, organize to improve their working conditions. Uh, they are, that act, they are, they have the right to do so. And if they are retaliated against, threatened, or fired because they are organizing, to improve their working conditions, as our clients were doing, that is a violation of the labor law. What possible penalties do you expect the company would face as, as a result? Again, we'll seek all available remedies under the law, and it will be up to the National Labor Relations Board to decide um, what remedies are granted. What kind of a time frame is there, though, for this to go through the process? In your in your experience? Sure. In our, in our experience, um, the National Labor Relations Board, the local Region 29, is going to investigate um, our allegations. Uh, our workers will give uh, sworn testimony, they, and we'll have the opportunity to present our case to them. Uh, and within a month or two, uh, they should decide whether or not they'll issue a complaint against the employer. If they issue a complaint against the employer, which we believe they will, um, then a hearing will be set for um, some time thereafter for an administrative law judge to determine uh, whether or not the uh, International Warehouse Group has violated the National Labor Relations Act. So. Great. Thank you. So uh, again, we'll be uh, all available for questions after. Uh, we have two more speakers. Uh, we're going to bring up uh, Adolfo, who is one of the uh, leaders of Make the Road New York, who will speak about what this means for other uh, immigrant workers across the island. Mi nombre es Adolfo Galdames, soy miembro y líder de Se Hace Camino a Nueva York. My name is Adolfo Galdames, and I'm a member and leader of Make the Road New York. Aquí en Long Island ya pasamos de los uh, mil miembros, y estamos trabajando con cada uno para educarlos para conocer nuestros derechos. Uh, we have over a thousand members like me here on Long Island, uh, and we are working very hard to educate immigrants like me uh, and many of us here uh, to, to know about our rights in, in the workplace and uh, in, in the public. Muchos de nosotros o nuestras familias hemos pasado situaciones duras y difíciles en nuestros trabajos. Many of us in, in our families have endured difficult situations like this in the workplace. Y el día de hoy estamos motivando a nuestra comunidad inmigrante para luchar sea legalmente o saliendo a las calles. And that's why today we're here to say to our immigrant community that we have to fight whether it's legally or in the streets. Como organización los estamos educando para que ninguna agencia o ningún empleador uh, pisotee nuestros derechos. We are educating the community to make sure that no employer or agency uh, is um, uh, stomping on our rights. 
Como inmigrantes, vinimos a trabajar y a luchar, no importando nuestros estatus migratorios, y ningún empleador tiene derecho de maltratarlos. As immigrants, we came here to work and work hard for our families, and no employer has the right to take advantage of us. Y ha llegado la hora de no permitir que nadie siga faltando el respeto a nadie de nuestra comunidad. And it is time for us to stand up and make sure that no one uh, disrespects our community. Y como organización vamos a luchar hasta el final y ayudar a nuestra comunidad para que nuestra voz sea escuchada. And as an organization, we will continue to work and fight hard until our voices are heard. Muchas gracias. Thank you. And now we're uh, going to bring uh, Dulce from Sepa Mujer, who will speak about uh, what their organization is also doing and why they're supporting workers like that. So I'm Dulce, I'm the organizer for Sepa Mujer, D-U-L-C-E, last name Rojas, R-O-J-A-S. And right now we're seeing three men here coming out and speaking out, but we also are very much trying to push Latina immigrant women to come out and speak out. Uh, we're seeing men speaking out, so we believe that women should too. Sepa Mujer is the, right now the only Latina immigrant women's rights organization on Long Island. So we're doing a lot of raising awareness on human trafficking putting an emphasis on labor trafficking as our Latino immigrant community is very vulnerable to this and they're exposed to this. Um, so actually the, we're doing a lot of work around this area so we stand in solidarity with Make the Road because they're doing a lot of great work in this area as well. Uh, so our conference will be on human trafficking uh, this Sunday, April 23rd at Stony Brook University Sac Center for all those who are welcome to come and learn about the issues about the Latino immigrant community facing and being exposed to vulnerable situations such as this. Uh, when we talk about labor abuse, we also have to talk about the possibility of labor trafficking, and this is something that we come across as organizations in the front lines. Um, so thank you. That pretty much brings us to the very end of this press conference. Uh, like Sepa Mujer, Make the Road will also be having, and a number of other organizations around the state and the country will be hosting workshops for immigrants uh, and their allies who are interested in standing up and supporting their rights. Uh, so for uh, in this very office, also this Friday, we will be hosting a workshop for immigrants, particularly those who are workers, uh, and throughout our offices in the city as well over the next week and a half before the major protest of May 1st, uh, so that workers and immigrants are well informed about their rights and can make informed decisions about what action they want to take uh, and what risks they are willing uh, to, uh, to endure. Um, for Long Island, we will be hosting that workshop here this Friday at 6.30 p.m. and uh, it's open for, for particularly workers and immigrants who are interested in their rights um, and, and knowing more about their rights and, and connecting and they can also contact our organization 631-231-2200 uh, if they want more information. 631-231-2200 um, and thank you and I think at this point we'll just be open for questions. Um, and that'll be it. So what steps, uh, if uh, immigrant workers feel that they are being exploited, what are the first steps that they can take uh, to come forward? Uh, one of the main things, that I, I, I'll leave it also for the attorneys to share, uh, one of the main pieces of advice for workers is to capture and write down everything they know that they are dealing with. Uh, it's important for us to know uh, dates, even if it's handwritten, for them to keep a record of the conditions that they are experiencing uh, in the workplace to ideally uh, keep track of names of other workers who have been fired or have endured similar situations. Um, and most importantly, to connect with an organization like Make the Road New York, like Sepa Mujer, and a number of other organizations uh, at the local level who are supporting immigrants. Uh, we at Make the Road also uh, connect uh, workers and offer consultations with labor lawyers, as well as a number of other organizations that provide free consultations so they can uh, begin to learn about their rights, but also Ha, uh, eva have their cases evaluated. Uh, anything else from the lawyers that you would add? No? Okay. Do you think this one case reflects wide, widespread abuses on Long Island for immigrant workers? And so are you like, trying to send a message to other employers? We definitely think that this is uh, reflective of the issues that we hear from many of our members uh, across the region and across the country. We know that many employers believe uh, that because immigrants may not speak English as well or because they may have uh, other immigration status or no immigration status, that they are a, a more exploitative uh, members of the workforce. And that's why we're here to make sure that this message is heard loud and clear 
particularly on Long Island, where we're seeing uh, a number of other ways in which uh, bias against immigrants and people who are different uh, may be showing up throughout our communities uh, and throughout uh, uh, the island, and, and that's why we're here. It's important for us to mention that uh, even to get to this point, uh, it takes, we probably, many of our attorneys and organizations have had to consider a number of other cases. Uh, so this just happens to be one of the cases where we had enough information and the workers were willing to step up uh, because one of the issues that we are facing, given the intimidation that the administration uh, is doing at the national level, is that immigrants are afraid of reporting any kind of abuse. And that's why we felt it was important to be here today as an organization and as a coalition to, to let immigrants know that we are here to stand with, with them and that we will stand up for their rights and to, to connect with us so we can inform them uh, of actions they can take uh, to protect their rights. So to be clear, you're saying that employers are potentially taking advantage of workers' rights because of their immigration status? Yes. yes. Yeah. I mean, the <laughs> uh, we know that that's clear, and we know a number of other, um, I think some of you in the media, particularly here in Long Island, may be more familiar with the, the case of the other workers at Ben's Deli uh, that were also fired. We are not working on that particular case, so we can't comment on it, uh, but many of the concerns were similar uh, from the reports that we read in the media. Uh, wage theft, we know, is rampant, uh, particularly with immigrant workers. Uh, many of them, uh, particularly because of language issues, but also because many times they are not familiar with labor laws um, here in the country, uh, are, are subject to much of that abuse. And that is why organizations like Make the Road and others regularly conduct workshops for, for immigrant workers to learn about their rights uh, and how to protect them, themselves. All right. Thank you. Thank you, Thank everyone. You.